My name is Danny Abdullah. I'm from Sydney, Australia. I am very grateful to be here today. I'm the husband of a loving wife, Layla, who is standing beside me, and a proud father of seven children. Anthony, my best friend, Angelina, my little helper, Liana, my rock and my inspiration, Sienna, my cheeky little actress, Alex, who is my little man, and Michael, who has a heart of a lion. We have a new addition, baby Selena, who is 12 weeks old. My wife and my kids are my reason for living. They are my purpose for waking up every day. Today is the eve of my son Anthony's birthday. In 2015, he was nine years old. He had a dream of Jesus. And Jesus asked him, Anthony, what do you want to be? In his dream, Anthony answered, I want to be a saint. Then Jesus replied, I will take you with me to heaven. I dismissed it as only a dream. But on the 1st of February 2020, Jesus fulfilled his promise. It was a perfect summer's day. Seven precious, adorable children took a walk to get some ice cream for my niece's 13th birthday. What should have been an innocent and enjoyable outing for the young kids turned into one of the worst road tragedies Australia has ever seen. The children were hit by a drunk and drug-affected driver who was driving in this quiet suburban street at 150 kilometers per hour, three times the legal speed limit. How can one car hit seven children? They couldn't have scripted this in a horror movie. I arrived on the scene. It was like entering the aftermath of a war zone. Four children dead. Their small, fragile, delicate bodies almost unrecognizable. Which child do I go to first? Along with my three children, Anthony, Angelina, and Sienna, their beautiful, loving cousin, Veronique Seika, was killed. My fourth child, Liana, witnessed everything. Another one of their cousins, Sharbal Kassas, suffered injuries so severe that he was placed in a coma for months. And his sister, Mabel, witnessed everything. Four lives lost three families shattered, an extended family devastated, a community in disbelief, and a nation in mourning. More police, paramedics, ambulance and fire engines arrived. They put the crime scene tape up and pushed me out. From far away, I saw the police cover Anthony, Angelina, Sienna, and Veronique with a white sheet. They were gone. In my heart, I said to God, God, this is bigger than me. I surrender to you. I arrived soon after Danny to the place where four of my children had been hit. More than half my family it was horrific. People were screaming all around me, but I was calm. I started praying and asking people around me to pray because I believe God would perform a miracle. Nothing is impossible with Jesus. I was confident 
that he wouldn't harm my kids. Liana came to me bleeding. She needed to go to the hospital. I went with her in the ambulance, still believing that the other children would join us. It wasn't until Danny arrived to the hospital with four of our Maronite priests that I realized three of my children had died. Anthony, Angelina, Sienna. I was crying, screaming, and begging for it not to be true. Two days later, when Liana went in for surgery, I went back to the scene. The place was covered in flowers. I knelt down at the place where each of the children laid after they had been hit and prayed, and our Father, Hail Mary, and the Fatima prayer. I prayed seven times, one for every child. I felt heavy, like I was walking down stations of the cross, and I saw Jesus on the cross. When the media approached me, they were speechless. What do you ask a mother who lost half her children in a blink of an eye? I spoke from my heart. I told them, Danny and I were blessed with seven children. They loved feeding the homeless at Team Jesus. We taught our kids to pray the rosary, to love each other, to read the Bible, to be kind. When I spoke about the driver, I said, I don't hate him. I think in my heart I forgive him, but I want the court to be fair. I didn't know the impact of these words. I believe the Holy Spirit moved my lips to speak words of forgiveness. The media asked me how people could help. I asked them to come and pray the stations of the cross at the site. Thousands showed up to pray that night. Then I asked them to pray the rosary and thousands came again the next night, and the night after that, every night until the funeral, and even after the funeral. The news reports became more about forgiveness and faith than they were about the tragedy. How can she forgive? Why would she forgive the man who hit seven kids? Why would she still have faith? How can she still love a God who has done this to her? Like Danny said, this was much bigger than us. I wasn't surprised that Layla chose to forgive so quickly. Anyone who knows Layla knows that she would choose forgiveness. We come from a large, extended, Lebanese, Maronite, Catholic family. The bigger the family, the bigger the problems. The greater the amount of love and forgiveness you need. Layla and I built our family on prayer. In the 18 years of our marriage, we have been consistently praying the Our Father asking God to forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's a very powerful prayer, if you mean it. Friends, forgiveness is the path to holiness. Days before the accident, I had been walking along the beach with my son, Anthony. The school year was about to begin 
As a father, I was worried about his choice of friends. I explained to him in detail that the daily choices he, ma he makes would determine the type of man he would become. I didn't realize at the time these words were for me. The day my children entered eternal life, I faced a choice. What path do I take? Do I take the path of construction or do I take the path of destruction? Do I seek to numb the pain with drugs and alcohol or do I choose to embrace this pain? This pain is unbearable. I've been carrying it since the day of the tragedy. I have sleepless nights and there are days when I feel hopeless. The choice I would make would not get rid of my pain, but it would determine where my family would be for the rest of their lives. We would either be stuck in the valley of pain and grief or I could lead them to the high ground. I choose to forgive myself for telling my kids to go for a walk. I choose to forgive the offender in obedience to my Father in heaven. If my children were here today, they would say, Dad, forgive him. Jesus Christ, my mentor and my teacher, is the ultimate example of forgiveness. After getting beaten, spat on, and then hung on the cross, Jesus said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. His blessed mother Mary watched her son suffer, then chose to forgive the disciples for leaving him. I had heard the passion story so many times growing up but it's only now, after such heavy grief, I understand its meaning. It all makes sense. In life, it's not if we suffer, but when we will suffer. I don't serve a God who tests me. I serve a God who has suffered greatly before me. The God we serve is a good father who says, let me go first. I will show you how to conduct yourself through the worst suffering imaginable. And the way through this is forgiveness. Forgiveness is more for the forgiver than the forgiven. When you forgive the other person, you start to heal. Forgiveness is not a single action in one moment. It has been more than two years and I must choose to forgive myself and the driver every day to not retreat into hatred. The daily choice to forgive is not easy, but it is our path to holiness. I must ask God for forgiveness daily and keep forgiving so that my family will not be enslaved by the trauma of that night. If I have revenge, bitterness, anger in my soul, my kids will have the same because kids do what you do, not what you say. I realized that I had to do for them what God did for me. He showed me how to go through the worst type of suffering and still, still forgive those who did this to him. Danny and I stand here with a message for all of you. It is the core message of Christianity. It is the words Jesus spoke on the cross. It is forgiveness, il perdono. Jesus asked us to forgive and explained why we should forgive, for they do not know what they do. People are blinded by sin and their wrongdoing. Forgiveness is a choice you make, a choice to let go of anger and bitterness. There is power in forgiveness. There's freedom in forgiveness. Forgiveness is a sign of strength, not a sign of weakness. Forgiveness 
is a gift you give to yourself and to others. Forgiveness allows you to achieve greatness and leads you to holiness. Forgive so God can forgive you. My beautiful daughter Liana, my inspiration, reminds me that there is an I in forgive. It means it starts with each one of us. Be the initiative and forgive unconditionally. I didn't have to wait for the driver to apologize or ask for forgiveness. I took the initiative. It started from my heart, spread to my family, our extended family, our local community, our country, and as we stand before you today, the whole world. Forgiveness allowed my marriage to survive. It taught Danny and I to look at each other in eyes of compassion and empathy. Forgiveness has begun the healing process in all of us. Our kids can look to the future. They can dream again. And most importantly, they still have faith in God. Liana was able to look at the driver with eyes of empathy and forgive him. Forgiveness has allowed the Abdallah, Saker, and Kassas families to unite and move forward with our pain and suffering. I would not have imagined that we would be in the Vatican on the eve of my son Anthony's 16th birthday to speak about forgiveness to the world. And from here, I would like to wish my son Anthony a happy heavenly 16th birthday. Anthony, I love you so much. I'm grateful to our Bishop Antoine Chabel Tarabai for giving us the opportunity to be here and supporting us on our journey. He nominated us to speak at this wonderful conference, World Meeting of Families 2022, but the Lord made it possible. The Lord never abandoned us. Through God's grace and mercy, we were able to forgive. Jesus asked us to forgive 70 times, seven times. Practice forgiveness daily. If you want to be able to forgive something big, start by forgiving yourself and your family. Seek God's mercy, love, and forgiveness of sins in confession. I'm not speaking from a place of perfection. I'm far from perfect. I'm here to serve the Lord. Are any of you perfect? None of us are perfect. Our kids were imperfect. The saints were imperfect either. But we are all called to be saints. God loves us with our imperfections. He is merciful. 
Forgiveness did not begin on the day our kids were taken away. And it did not end on the day we forgave the driver. It must be a regular part of the life of every Christian family. Forgiveness has brought us healing and peace. I am heartbroken, but I am at peace because I know my kids are in heaven. They are with Jesus. I am closest to my kids when I'm at Mass. When you are at your weakest, go to church and cry on Jesus' shoulder. Everyone has a cross to carry. We can't control what happened to us, but we can choose how to respond. Take control of your life. Repent, love, forgive, pray, confess, and be humble. This is our path to holiness. I look at faith like a spiritual bank account. Every good deed, every act of kindness, every prayer, every time you forgive, every time you, make, you love, you make a deposit. You do this so that on the darkest day of your life, when you have nothing to give, you can go to your faith account and call upon your good deeds. We pray that you never go through anything like the suffering or grief that we have been through. We hope that you will never have to forgive something so big. But you must prepare yourself for whatever suffering will come. If we can leave you with something today, it would be to encourage you to pray, practice forgiveness every day, and teach your kids to do the same. After every death, there is a resurrection. And Leila and I have been privileged to hear from many people in Australia who have forgiven and been reconciled since hearing our story. In memory of our kids, the little saints, we turned this tragedy into a day of forgiveness. Leila and I have created an I Forgive Day on the anniversary of the tragedy in which is held on the 1st of February each year. This day has been endorsed by the Australian government and is now recognized as a national day of forgiveness. We hope to bring I Forgive Day to our motherland, Lebanon, the Middle East, and then the whole world. People are yearning for forgiveness and are beginning to understand the freedom it brings. It's not just a message for Catholics or Christians. It is for the whole world. It is a message for all humanity. It is a path not only to holiness, but to freedom. And now I turn to you, Lord Jesus. You taught us, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And only then you will become sons and daughters of your Father who is in heaven. Please, Lord, help Layla, myself, and all of us here to continue the journey of forgiveness. Thank you very much.